We're back. We're live. We're here. Think Tech Hawaii. Think Tech Talks on a given Wednesday. And you know what Wednesday is. What is Wednesday? Wednesday is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Most important thing that happens on any given Wednesday. Ray Starling, my co-host, say hi. Hi, Jay. How are you? I knew you'd say that. <laughs> and Rich Ewan from HNEI, the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, which is right there on Ward Avenue, among other places, yeah? No. No? Main, Where is it? Main campus. Main campus on UH. It's part of UH. Yeah. That's the thing. Okay, and he is the hydrogen systems program manager, and that's why we're talking about hydrogen, hydrogen today. In fact, we're calling today, what are we calling it? Supporting a hydrogen, a Hawaii hydrogen economy here on ThinkTech. Correct. I know this because I'm reading your slides. Very good. We're going to have slides today. What can I say? It's death an by academic thing. Death by PowerPoint. You, you connect up with the university. And that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we try to resist, and yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but before we do any of that, we learn about supporting a hy Hawaii hydrogen economy. Um, we're going to talk to Carol and Carl because actually Hawaii Energy has a new program, and we we need. It's a scoop, isn't it? We're getting first information on this, right, Carolyn? Very first information, Jay. So we are now offering a window trade-up program, which is specifically for residents who purchase a qualified new Energy Star window AC. You get a $50 rebate, provided that you surrender that old working unit at your house. So it's a great program. We actually have um, a number of participating retailers. You just have to go in, purchase the new Energy Star AC, get the application there, bring it home, and get replace your old one and then give us a call and we'll come and pick up the old one for free, haul it away and make sure it's properly recycled and then you get 50 bucks. Wow. So what, what, what kind of AC then? Any AC qualifies? Specifically for the window ACs. So they have to be Energy Star qualified. Mm -hmm. They have to be at least 10.8 EER, which is the efficiency rating. So we're ensuring that they're a higher efficiency. And um, you would work with a participating retailer. So we have applications available at Sears, Lowe's, NEX, um, City Mill. So all the Home Depot. Um, so give me an idea how much I have to spend to get my 50 bucks benefit. Well, it depends on the size of your window AC. You can kind of imagine they all look the standard, so, standard proportions, but um, some are larger than others. And the range that we see is anywhere between 150 to 400 or 500 dollars. Okay, so I get, I get <clears throat> now you're going to help me connect with a responsible contractor too. There's a benefit in that, actually. Well, uh, yeah, so for the window ACs, the majority of folks actually install them th their sel themselves, but if most of the uh, retailers do offer installation uh, services. Um, just to go back to the dollar value, though, although you're putting out, you know, a, you're spending to purchase a new item, you can save almost $100 every year just for, uh, with the higher efficiency unit. Oh, so, sure. How yeah. does that work exactly? So, because they are, the technology itself is better, it's a higher efficiency unit, you're using less electricity to create the same amount of cooling. And so it's pretty simple. You're, you're saving electricity with, and getting the same benefits, nice and cool. So if my wife, and by the way, she does say this every day, wants to get a new air conditioner to put in a window, this would, this would qualify. This would, absolutely. Now remember, if the old one, you have to get rid of that old one in the window. So that's okay. the most important. If I don't have one there now, I don't get the benefit. No, no, because what we need is we're, our program goals are really to help people make more efficient choices. And so air conditioning, if you've got one in the window, it's utilizing a lot of electricity. If you don't, you're adding an air conditioner, you're really just adding more electricity. So we encourage people to get rid of old inefficient units and we help them by taking care of all of the hallway and proper recycling of the components. Okay, well it makes it easier for sure. So have you had response on this yet, or is it so new that nobody even knows about it? It's so new. The applications are just hitting the uh, hitting stores this week, and we're planning to do a big press release early next week, so stay tuned. But we encourage you to give us a call, 537-5577, if you have any questions, or visit the website, hawaiienergy.com. 537-5577. Yep for big bucks on energy efficiency. On all things energy efficiency. All things in energy efficient. That's, that's, quite, that's, that's a big swallow because there's a lot of things 
by which you can be energy efficient. So what part of that, uh, Ray Starling, would you agree with? All of it. All actually. of it. Yes. There it is. Absolute. 100%. Yes, and, and we are constantly looking for places that we've overlooked before and uh, getting these old window bangers, as we call them, out of the uh, circulation and uh, off the grid uh, and replacing it with a high efficiency energy star unit is, is really another way to save uh, uh, kilowatt hour and more. Uh, so we're we're trying to engage now with people and, and also make it easy for them to be able to uh, get these old air conditioners uh, recycled and the refrigerant properly dealt with after it's taken out because that that causes um, its own yeah, its own problems. Yeah. So when you air. take it away, you're you're doing me a, a big favor. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. You just have to take it out of the window. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll come and pick it up off your porch. I might just push it out the window. And then you can go in the backyard and <laughs> haul it away. I'll watch. <laughs> well, you know, that's, you know, Hawaii energy is relentless. You know. When you guys come up with this stuff, you are always working for us, always sort of nibbling away at the waste. And uh, I, I keep in my mind, and I've had this conversation before, my thinking of when you come up with these ideas, I have this vision of a big table of people. You know, it's like a brain session in a corporate, a corporate setting, right? This is what kind of creative ideas we got today, right? You know, well, we, and then we, somebody comes up with we something. We sometimes do that, but but a lot of times it's um, we someone comes in and asks a question. We say, oh well, we haven't been doing that. We should do that, and uh, uh, we get ideas from from people just coming and and asking about them. And uh, you know, we we have uh, saved a lot of kilowatt hours. Uh, must admit, not not necessarily from our, our own ingenuity, but from someone asking about it, and then we say, well, we haven't really looked at that. And so when we do look at it, we find that uh, uh, we can save a lot of kilowatt hours. So, uh, Carolyn, you know, as a, the final part of the Negawatt moment here, I want to ask you one of the questions. You guys come up with these fantastic and creative ideas every, every week, essentially. I mean, we don't hear about it you know, over and over, you're just coming up with these new programs. What happens when these new programs get to be old programs? Do you retire them? In other words, you know, I've got a new air conditioning window set up and I get my $50. Can, is this going to last for six months or a year or two? How long does this go before you retire the program? Or well, is it forever? Is it forever? That's a great question. So I think there's a couple answers to, to what you're asking. Um, first and foremost, you know, our programs run on a yearly basis. Our program year goes from July 1 to June 30th. And so we have funding allocated for these programs, whether they be new or existing, um, for that amount of time. Funding, it is while well funding lasts. So if everyone goes out and, and takes advantage of this and we run out of our allocated numbers, well, then um, we, we look to whether or not we need to kind of ship things around and get more rebates in that sector but the most importantly we're constantly looking to push the envelope to make people make the more efficient decisions so programs get retired when they're no longer really pushing that that efficiency decision so when you look at appliances what's available on the floor if it's all energy star rated well and if and a rebate's not really pushing you to the better decision, so we look at well, what about the higher tiers of Energy Star to get people to make the most efficient decision. So it's a constant process of of listening to the market, watching what's uh, what's available for technologies, and making the changes as we as we move along. Yeah, and 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 if you find that it still saves energy, then you're going to try to find money to renew it at, at some point. Exactly. Instead some, of lose lose out on it. Yeah, we never you're looking for bang for your buck is what you're Very much so. For, yeah. And every program has its own cost effectiveness, so you have to balance that as well because we have to be, um, you know, we're a ratepayer funded program. We have to allocate the dollars in the best manner that we can to get the most energy savings. I learned something today. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. She's terrific, Ray. She, she That's is. Carolyn Carl, you know, Hawaii Energy. In your megawatt moment, and this makes me feel that we got to take a break because now that I learned something, um, I think we got to, every time I learn something, <laughs> I to take a break. Um, uh, this is Mitch Abbott, uh, Mitch Ewan, and we're going to uh, get, get into a uh, discussion over supporting a Hawaii hydrogen economy and Ray Starling, and we'll be right back after this break. You'll see. 
Aloha, my name is Willow Chang Elion, and I host a show called The Art of Life. We air live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. And what we do is basically we focus on individuals who create a unique sense of place for Hawaii. These are movers and shakers, artists, innovators. They are also traditionalists. They're all involved in the archival process, and they make this place a unique place, one that makes Hawaii a richer place to be. I hope you do join us and certainly tell your friends about the show, whether they live here or they live abroad. It's a way to give back to our community. We're keeping yeah, it on them. Across there, the megawatt moment. Oh. Hey, oh, hey we're <laughs> back. We're back. Megawatt. We're live. We're having a good time. It's Wednesday. So many things are happening. Ray, for example, stood up in the middle. He's still standing. Oh. Do not put the camera on him. Okay, <laughs> and Mitch is here waiting so patiently about hydrogen. Yeah, I'm very so, patient. So you have to be patient. Before we started the show, Mitch, you, you told me that you had a lot of new projects going. Yeah. And I am very excited about that because I personally, I agree, believe in hydrogen. I really do. In fact, as we speak right now, our ThinkTech OC16 show is featuring a show on hydrogen with your friend Stan Osserman. Oh, good. Yeah, we went out, we, we did a walk and talk all around his uh, 531 Cook Street premises. Good. And then we went to Hickam Air Force Base. Yeah. And we looked at his, you know, being revised kind of premises out there. They're doing <laughs> a lot of stuff out there. And he's got all these uh, vehicles going on and uh, all these things he's doing. And it's really impressive. Did um, you ride on the bus? Of course. Isn't it great? It is great. The loudest thing in the bus is the window frames. Yeah, he still yeah, hasn't got those crickets. can't hear the engine at all. Hasn't got those crickets out of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, and, and I understand about hydrogen. I, I think hydrogen has got real advantage over pure electric cars. Sharon Moriwaki, who's sitting behind the cameras, may disagree with me because she's got a pure electric car. Right. Hydrogen. But, but hydrogen, hydrogen, wow. We're, okay. not, we're not fighting electric cars. We've had this. I am. Before. I'm fighting electric yeah, right. cars. I want hydrogen. And you've even cars. been the hydrogen firefighting <laughs> trainer. <so. laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. That was great. In fact, I met one of the firemen, came to our program at lunch today. Yeah. Our program at lunch today was about medical research. But there was a fireman there, and he wanted to know about medical research because firemen have to take care of people and all this. It's very interesting. Sure, yeah. And he was at that program with the hydrogen. Anyway, so, you know, before we started, you said, oh, HNEI has a lot of projects going on in hydrogen now. Not just HNEI. There are a lot of hydrogen projects going on in the state. So. Okay, yeah. let's, let's hear them. You know, we want the news. We want so you're going to bypass on. all my canned presentations? That's we'll it. Just <laughs> Jump right That's to the it. right to the right That's to the okay fine so uh, I'll start off with the Big Island projects um, first of all uh, HNEI does have a couple of uh, projects on the Big Island uh, we're planning to put in a, a hydrogen production station at the PGV geothermal plant uh, and we will take that hydrogen and we'll transport it to two sites one in Hilo and one up at Volcano National Park. Uh, right now in Hilo, uh, it's, it, it was planned or is planned to have this hydrogen dispenser at the uh, county base yard where they have all their county vehicles. But I would like to try to get some more public outreach out of it. So I recently met with the chancellor of UH Hilo and looking at him to help uh, to host the hydrogen uh, dispensing system for our bus at UH Hilo. So why would we do that? Well, first of all, it provides visibility to all the students, the young people coming up to see this thing in action and the general public. Secondly, workforce development. This is a big uh, issue that's right now still hiding, but uh, when we met with the mayor of the uh, Big Island staff, some of the uh, department heads were saying, look, we need to get our workers trained up on these hydrogen vehicles, otherwise, they're going to uh, go to costly consultants, but we want our people to be able to work on these vehicles. So the idea is to try to leverage all this uh, infrastructure to develop a workforce uh, training program at UH Hilo. And this could be a, wor a world-class uh, um, entity. Uh, if you Google it, there's not much going on in workforce development. So it is kind of like a, uh, a, mar a market opportunity out there. For us when to you do say something. not going on, not, not much going on in work, work for you mean workforce development in, in hydrogen, in hydrogen. As, a, as a renewal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. right, exactly. Okay. Hydrogen. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a great place for it. Yeah, exactly. And we'll have the vehicles, and we'll have the hydrogen, and uh, people actually get a chance to get hands on and use it. Okay, when's it happening? 
Uh, working out the details, uh, um, one of the things I'll have to do is, is uh, find out what the budget's going to be. Where I, where I am now, uh, all the infrastructure's in place. If I go to the UH Hilo site, I'll have to probably put in some uh, driveways or roads so the buses can have access to the pumps, and that's going to take some money. And so I'm going to have to go and get some more, probably get some more money for the, uh, the uh, site work, and that could be uh, one of the things we do this legislative session. We talked about uh, the, the barrel tax fund, where we're going to get the money. 60% uh, of that fund is going into the general fund. If you look at Blue Planets, um, they did a public survey. I think it was like 85% of the people that were surveyed supported the uh, barrel tax as long as the money was going to go towards energy and renewable energy pro projects. Well, of course, 60% of that got siphoned off and went straight to the general fund. I don't understand that at all. Well, when they I did it, when they did it, the state was in a bad financial state. So you could understand why we had to do it to kind of fill the gaps. But we're not there now. And uh, we can't just accept the status quo. We need to say, look, this is what that fund was supposed to be used for. It's several million dollars. And here are some viable projects that we can use this money for. I mean, you have to show the people that it's just not going into a black hole, that it's going to be used for the public good. And the public good is to get these young people trained up to be technologists in this high-tech, new high-tech world, to take care of the vehicles that are coming. OK, well, just a footnote to that is I heard this week that, um, that the major manufacturers, car manufacturers, are in uh, assembly. I mean, they're, they're Correct. actually producing, in production is the term, right. uh, hydrogen cars now for sale in the American market. This is a big deal, isn't Hyundai it? Hyundai has already uh, imported a fleet of four or 500 vehicles to LA. Uh, they lease these cars for about $450 a month, including the cost of hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Great deal. Toyota and other vehicle manufacturers are looking at Hawaii. Where's the infrastructure? How are we going to fill these vehicles? I guarantee if we can put the infrastructure in place, and this is where we need to focus our effort in Hawaii, the cars will arrive. Infrastructure is pretty vague, actually. Mitch, could you tell us what you mean yeah, by that? Yeah, we need to produce the hydrogen. We need to dispense it. And um, that's the basic. The basics. So we don't have to ship it in from LA, or it, we, we can make it right here? We can make it that's right here. That's the big message, isn't That's it? the big message, yeah. yeah. yeah and exactly. you can make it from renewables. So it's yeah, not like we're using any fossil fuel, and we're you know, in encouraging the development of the renewable industry, and you can do it in any island, distributed like, and it's a fabulous possibility. Exactly. But what do you need to do to make that happen? You need electrolyzer, right? That's one way to make uh, the hydrogen. Well, tell us all the ways. Well, you can either uh, crack um, a, a hydrocarbon or a biofuel um, to make hydrogen, or you can use electricity in an electrolyzer. That's the simplest way to understand it. And that and takes water. You, water's yeah, a raw water material. Yeah, water, you split the hydrogen and the oxygen, but you need energy to do that. So yeah. the key there is your energy, your electrical energy, has to be less than about six or seven cents a kilowatt hour. Otherwise, it's not going to, I mean, it has to compete with gasoline. Yeah. We can't be so much, so much but, more but, expensive but there, that nobody can afford it. Some of the, the long-term contracts, I understand, for wind uh, have gotten down in the six, Correct. Six, seven cent That's right. range. Yeah. And so we're, we're, not, we're not too far away from actually being able to do that. Yeah, the two, uh, two or three really good sources are wind. Actually, if you have a big enough PV array, I've seen models that show that you can get uh, PV down with all the tax credits down to five or six cents a kilowatt hour. Certainly geothermal. And uh, the other big one here, particularly here on Oahu, is waste, like the H power plant, is we can be using that electricity to make hydrogen. So <clears throat> you t you're talking large, large economies of scale here. I mean, why can't I make a little electrolyzer or some gizmo in the back of my house, uh, you know, right, right outside my garage? I want it outside because I don't want the hydrogen in my garage. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> no, and and then and then I use that to run my hydrogen car. Why can't I do that? You can do that. What will it cost me? It'll cost you uh, probably five or six thousand dollars to do that. It's not too but bad. You're not going to make a lot of hydrogen with that. I mean, well, I just need enough to how, get down to the studio and back. That's all. Well, you could do that for five <laughs> or six thousand dollars. Yeah. Exactly. 
So, okay, so but, that's but part of it the, is you to... You need the economies of scale of, to part, do it okay. for the, the infrastructure. Otherwise, it's too expensive. It's a small-time. Yeah. Yeah, small okay, time so, stuff. so I, I need infrastructure to make hydrogen out of renewables. This is very important. Correct. Okay. Now you have the hydrogen. I have to distribute it. I have to make it available to the guy on the highway right. who's driving this car around because he, he doesn't want to have what do you call range anxiety. Correct. Okay. So let's talk about that. Um, how, do I, how do I get that out on the highway? Maybe I carry a tank, an extra tank in my back. Uh, no. no. What no, do I We do? use gas stations. We have gas stations all over the island. So what does it look like, this thing at the gas station, this infrastructure thing? Well, the infrastructure, for example, I have a picture in my slide bank, but now you won't you let pull me it use up? it. No, no, no. Yeah, well, it's right there. It's back a free country. A free country. First yeah. Amendment. I'm, We're all, I'm you know, really glad it's you all asked about me the that First question. Amendment, Mitch. <clears throat> that's, that's Mitch Ewan. He's with HNEI. Yeah, He's yeah, all about yeah, the First yeah, Amendment, yeah. too. Uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh, this slide. First of all, if you want to show this slide, it shows... We're going to show that right now. There okay, it is. Okay, on the left, you'll see a hydrogen trailer. Uh, inside that skin, there's a whole bunch of hydrogen tanks. It's being hauled by a regular pickup truck. And then next slide shows uh, one of the GM uh, Equinox hydrogen vehicles that have been here for the last three or four years. In fact, you actually rode in one. I did, and I liked it. Great ride, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, fantastic. Now that is at the Kaneohe Marine Corps Base hydrogen station that uh, I'm building right now. And this uh, blue uh, object is a dispenser. It looks just like a gas pump. Yeah. And I've got low test, which is 350 bar, and I've got high test, 700 bar, 10,000 psi. What's the difference between low test and high test? Exactly? Just the pressure. <laughs> oh, can, the pressure. Yeah. So it's faster. That's a joke. Oh. High test and high test. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Let me reel that back a yeah, little right. bit. <laughs> so what's the thing about the pressure? I mean, I understand well, you that you can range. load one of these cars in a matter of seconds, but you have to use, you have to chill the hydrogen first. Am I right? Yeah, right. You can fill this car, and you want to flip back to the slide, uh, in five minutes. But in order to do that, you have to chill the hydrogen down to minus 20 degrees centigrade. So that takes you know, a big chiller unit, a big refrigeration unit um, uh, in order to do that. Yeah, is it at this uh, room temperature that would not be possible? Well, the, pr the, the issue is in these cars, the tanks are made out of composite materials. And when you push that much hydrogen at that much pressure, it causes them to heat up. And if they get beyond okay. a certain temperature, uh -huh. basically you have to write off the, uh, the tank. Yeah. It's very expensive to change these tanks out. So we need to keep it cool. Right. And what we want to be able to do is multiple fill. You know, a car, one car coming in after the other, just like you have at a regular gas station. So that's how you do it. We're going to take another break. Uh, that's Mitch Ewan, HNEI, Hawaii National Energy Institute, part of the university. We're talking about uh, hydrogen systems uh, building a hydrogen economy, I think it was, in the state of Hawaii. And right. There's things happening in hydrogen you need to know about. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard, and I host the show Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series right here every Wednesday from 2 to 3 Hawaii time. I would really love to have you watch the show and see what we do here. I talk with some of the most amazing people artists, most of them, all of them involved in some sort of artistic process. And our goal here on the show is to dig into that artistic process and you would not believe what some people say, what some people do, what people go through to express. And these are people who have to express somehow and I find that infinitely interesting. Not only that they have to express but how they end up doing it. I really hope that you will watch the show and enjoy talking with some of these people the same way that I do. Thanks, and I hope to see you soon on Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series, Wednesdays from 2 to 3. See you soon. Well, Jay's Angels. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard, and I host the show Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series right here every Wednesday from 2 to 3 Hawaii time. I would really love to have you watch the show and see what we do here. I talk with some of the most amazing people, artists, most of them, all of them involved in some sort of artistic process. And our goal here on the show is to dig into that artistic process and you would not believe what some people say, what some people do, what people go through to express. And these are people who have to express somehow and I find that infinitely interesting. 
not only that they have to express, but how they end up doing it. I really hope that you will watch the show and enjoy talking with some of these people the same way that I do. Thanks, and I hope to see you soon on Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series, Wednesdays from 2 to 3. See you soon. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're really live, and Ray is really live. Ray's <laughs> microphone was not quite working, and we've goosed Ray, uh, I mean the levels. And, uh, and now <laughs> he's feeling better, and we're feeling better. <laughs> now we can hear him in proper form. Okay, so you had, Ray had a question. This is why we needed to okay. take a break, make sure you can ask the question. Well, I, I wanted to ask Mitch, what, what, what are the real barriers to having a hydrogen economy, perhaps uh, just in fleet vehicles, if nothing right. else right yeah. now? Yeah. And your well, answer. Well, my, my simple answer is money. Money, okay. Yeah, because infrastructure costs money. If you look at our current fossil fuel infrastructure, that's taken over 120, 150 years to develop. And so we're trying to leapfrog that with the hydrogen infrastructure. And frankly, we, it needs money, not huge money. We can build one of these stations for two or $3 million. Um, that's not- that's, that's a lot of money. I'm, I mean, maybe we come from a different country, but <laughs> two or $3 million to me. It's a lot of money. Well, when you look at the cost of a gasoline station, that's about what they cost, two or three million dollars. That's true. So, there you go. So but but see, that's why I say you could start off with the with the fleet vehicles because you wouldn't necessarily have to have 40 well, stations around. You have one station well, where exactly. they all come to at the end of the day. Yeah, my, my plan uh, or what I'm proposing is that we do focus on fleet vehicles like the bus system, the public bus system. If sure. we're asking the the general public, the taxpayer, to invest in this hydrogen infrastructure, they should see some immediate benefit out of it. And nothing better than climbing on a really clean, quiet, public, 40-foot transit bus. Can, can I, if I'm the city and county of Honolulu and I want to get one of those things, where do I go and how much do I spend? I'm not quite sure what you mean, where do you go? A bus. A you hydrogen can buy a bus, bus from a company uh, called U.S. Uh, Hybrid. Uh, hybrid, US hybrid, located here in Hawaii. They have a, a subsidiary or, or a branch plant here. In fact, they assemble the buses that we are currently using. Now, let me see if I can find one. Picture of one. It, it, going the wrong way here. I am so glad we're not looking at okay. all the slides. There it is. <laughs> oh, why not? They're great slides. So there, uh, if you flash that one up, you'll see a bus. Uh, it's based on a, uh, a standard shuttle bus, and that was assembled here in Hawaii by U.S. Hybrid. And they're prepared to come out here and assemble hundreds of these buses here in Hawaii. And that, that translates back to workforce development sure. and all the things we talked about. Can I, can I ask a, a, a hard question? May I? Yes, please do. Okay. Assemble? What is this thing, assemble? Why don't you put it on an assembly line and build it like a regular bus, except make it a hydrogen bus? Why do we have to re reassemble, is what you're really talking about? If we want to do hydrogen buses seriously, we should buy them as hydrogen buses. Currently, this is how they make You asked me the question, where do we get the buses? This is how they do it. Okay. Okay, you buy an existing bus and you convert it over to hydrogen. There's a lot of engineering that goes into it, parts, kits. And they apply those, and so you assemble it. When is the, when is the the, the you know the pre-made one coming? Are we going to have? Those? I have no idea. It may, may take uh, several years when we get uh, volume production, where you can make it from the ground up as a bus. Right now, they make about maybe 30, 40 of these buses a year here in the United States. So it's not cost effective. So is it? Yeah. Is it, is it worth it, you know, honestly, in, in sort of a sharp pencil approach, say we're going to take a bus, regular bus, even an old bus, which is cheap, okay, and we're going to upgrade it, we're going to reassemble it as a hydrogen bus. This costs plenty of boku, okay, and then we're going to put it online for the city and county of Honolulu and move people down Kapilani Boulevard using the bus, right? right? Okay. It's got a lot of big benefits. Does that still work? Because, Absolutely. because you know, you just laid in a couple of hundred thousand dollars reassembling the bus. Yeah. It's not cheap. It totally works. I'm glad you brought up Waikiki. We have these big, stinky diesel buses in Waikiki, <laughs> the jewel of Hawaii. Okay, right now, these buses have to turn their engines off when they're picking up passengers at the hotel because they're spewing out diesel fumes, 
and they're making noise, and the hotels do not like it. And when you turn the bus off, guess what? The air conditioning that is doesn't hot, work. Really hot. Yeah, it gets really hot. <laughs> Climate change. So you know, it's just not. I mean, if you look at a little uh, battery, one of those AAA batteries, the cost of that battery in terms of actual energy in it is like $120. But you gladly spend that money because of the utility that it gives you. And that's the same with buses. The utility, not having these noisy old buses downtown Waikiki is a perfect example of why we should have these buses and spend a few dollars more and go first class and make it a real visitor experience. Maybe we'll attract people to Hawaii because look, they have this great transportation system, no noise, no diesel smell, pristine environment. Isn't that what we're selling? Okay. Paradise? It's a quality of ride. It's really important, not only for you know the tourists, but for the rest of us guys, too, because we're important, too. You yeah. were in the bus, <clears throat> except I, for the I, I love the bus, and the bus had great air conditioning. Yeah, it did, didn't it? It was a really hot day. Days seem to be getting hotter these days. And it was about <laughs> a week ago. And it, in fact, it was last Friday, I think. Yeah. Uh, and it was a it was a really wonderful experience to get in the bus, be cool, and not have any sound. You know, no no sound of this you know engine thing. I don't like engine sounds anymore. I want electrical sounds. I, I want hydrogen sounds. So what you're saying is that with a little investment or maybe a large investment, we can make a fleet of these large public vehicles like buses, maybe some trucks, and we can we can sort of work on that area of the vehicular economy and, and train people to do these uh, assemblies, okay, and, right. and start there. That's our starting point exactly. with the buses. Exactly. Where's the money going to come from? Because, you know, the way that works, the bus fare is going to be more. Not necessarily. Right now, we subs heavily subsidize public transportation, as you know. Who's we? We're spending, we, the taxpayers. We, we, okay. How are we paying for the rail? We're spending billions on that. Where's so that coming same, from? Same method then. Same method. Out of, out of the taxpayers. I mean, uh, bus fares only cover about 20% of the cost of running that bus. Now, the other part of it is that uh, uh, a fuel cell bus or hydrogen bus is much more economical to run, both in terms of the use of fuel. It's twice as efficient, so it goes twice the distance on the same amount of fuel. Um, it's less wear and tear on the brakes. It's an, an electric drive. Because the brakes are the yeah. kind of, what do you call those brakes? They, they, they have brake pads. No, but they, they, they take the energy. Regenerative, regenerative, regenerative brake. brakes. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Sharon's car has that, Sharon. Right. Sharon's car has that. The bus drivers love it. The mechanics love it because it's not this dirty, greasy old engine that they have to work on. You're not dumping oil. You're not using oil. Okay, so is there a plan to do this, Mitch? Absolutely, there's a plan. Okay, who's, whose plan is it and who's doing it? We're doing this at the <laughs> University of Hawaii and at, with HCAT. I'm working with Stan Osserman and the U.S. Department of Energy. They've been out here a lot. And uh, you met Pete Devlin. And by the way, he wants to come on the show in two weeks. I met him before. Yeah. He was on the show once. Yeah, so. they're investing heavily in bringing this plan to Hawaii. Yeah, this is really important. Yeah. But I mean, I agree with you. Um, I think that if we start out at, you know, doing buses and the like, and people will get to see, and in the process, we'll have this infrastructure. Exactly. And then you go to cars, right. and and hopefully the you know there'll be cars coming here. I have this really weird feeling that these manufacturers make these cars, and then they decide what state they're going to send them to. Right? Well, they do that. Well, yeah. they did that with the electric cars. Yeah. A lot and of we it. We may not be the first choice either. A lot of it has to do with policy. That's the other thing we have to work on, actually. Hawaii has some very good policies already in place. For example, it is a policy of the state of Hawaii that we shall have a hydrogen economy. It's written in the statutes. It's also a policy of the uh, Hawaii, state of Hawaii to invest in hydrogen infrastructure, and they have a hydrogen fund that they actually invested $10 million, $10 million in, and it's still there. I mean, the money's been depleted. Has it? But the fund is still there. So, so more money could go in. Could go in. So where would it come from? You could allocate money from the barrel tax money to go into the hydrogen fund from that 60% that's currently being hived I off. I vote for that. Yeah. Ray, would you vote for that? I would certainly vote for there that. There you go. It's unanimous. And invested in the <laughs> infrastructure part for public transportation, the general public. What's the first thing we're going to see on this, on this road to hydrogen? We're going to see three or four of these uh, hydrogen shuttle buses. Uh, one here that the Air Force is running around with uh, in Oahu. Two at Volcano National Park. 
which look just like, that's actually a Volcano National Park bus. You see that picture, yeah. This one is one of the two Volcano National Park buses. It's just being completed here on Oahu at the HCAT facility by US Hybrid. And uh, that will be, uh, once, once it's through all its trials and tests, it'll be shipped over to the Big Island. And we'll have a third one on the Big Island that looks, it'll actually be slightly bigger bus than that, and that's the one we're gonna be using in Hilo. And what kind of range does that bus have? This particular bus um, has a, only a range of only 110, 120 miles, and that's fine for the park. That's what they need. Right. The bus for Hilo, we've added. We're adding an extra tank. That'll have a range of about 225 to 250 miles, okay. which is fine for a shuttle bus. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you can take it into the gas station, quote gas station, and fill it up in five minutes. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like an electric vehicle where you have to wait for hours mm -hmm. where your battery recharges. That's an interesting feature about hydrogen vehicles, though. So you say this this one we're looking at, this uh, the bus that's going out to Volcanoes Park, uh, has 120 miles range. Okay, but I've seen these tanks. The tanks are about five feet long, right? Maybe 18 inches yeah. in diameter. Uh, actually, they, longer than that. Longer, yeah. or six feet long, maybe yeah. seven yeah. feet Ten long. Ten feet long. Ten. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Ten. <laughs> Okay. Give me time. Okay. And, uh, you know, 18 inches diameter. Yeah, sure. And they have sort of this carbon fiber, fiberglass thing wrapped around them, right. so they're not going anywhere. Right. And they're relatively light. Yes. It's not steel. It's uh, more high tech than that. Right. Okay. So then you put these under these buses and the trucks and whatnot, right. and you, usually they carry two of them, but you could make it more. Okay. And here's my point. Okay. So if you have range anxiety, just carry more carry more tanks, put a couple, put six tanks on there. Correct, or have some strategically placed hydrogen dispensers. And or, and either or. way, or yeah. both. Yeah. And so, I mean, when, when we're in that phase of development, when we, um, you know, we have range anxiety, we don't have infrastructure out there, or at least enough to, you know, give us comfort from the anxiety, we just get vehicles with more hydrogen. And then we can go hundreds and hundreds of miles, Correct. more than a car could ever go. They have hydrogen cars now that can go 400 miles on a one fill of hydrogen. I can't do that on my, on my, on my car. So I another, can't do that. This leads to another project that we're doing on the Big Island. Perfect. We rehearsed this, by the way. I don't <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Perfect lead-in. You know, uh, with Blue Planet, uh, Hank Rogers, uh, it's a company called Big Island Hydrogen. We're building, or they're building, we're building a hydrogen highway around the Big Island of Hawaii. One <laughs> north, one highway. south, <laughs> one east, west, and one in the middle. Uh, hydrogen hydrogen highway. And we have the whole island covered. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me ask, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued about the uh, b being able to generate this yeah. hydrogen with, uh, with clean energy, right. uh, renewable energy, and the cost involved in that uh, versus, you know, per mile. Right. What, what is the... Um, sort of the, the figures that you guys use when you're talking about uh, range and cost per mile with, uh, with hydrogen development, we, with, let's say PV. Let me, let me answer it a different way, okay? So okay. we, we uh, in the hydrogen world, we talk about kilograms of hydrogen. Right. Kilogram is like a weight, a measure of weight. We compare that to a gallon of gasoline because they have the same energy equivalent. Okay. So I will get twice the range for that amount of energy as you would get with a gallon of gasoline. It takes about 50 kilowatt hours to make that kilogram of hydrogen. So for example, okay. if your electricity is 10 cents a kilowatt hour, that's $5 to make a kilogram, which is equivalent to $2.50 a gallon of gasoline. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I got you. So, if I have a car that can do 60 miles on a kilogram of hydrogen for $5, quick as a flash, the math is X cents per mile. Okay. I, I'm not All that right. quick. <laughs> okay, well. Um, but it's going to be half the cost of what you can do with gasoline. Okay. But you have to get that input cost of your power down to below that 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Okay. That okay. is key. And that's what a lot of our other projects at the university okay. are doing is trying to find energy sources that will deliver that power for that amount. It's no point in having some energy source that costs a buck a kilowatt hour or 42 cents sure. a kilowatt hour like they're paying for grid power on the Big Island. That's not going to work. 
we have to have, on the Big Island, they have hydro. Ed Olson, uh, the Olson Trust, is putting in a 400 kilowatt hydro dam in Kahu. Um, and he only needs 100 kilowatts of that. That's a perfect uh, source for making hydrogen. Geothermal plant's got lots of capacity. It, it, it can, and it's here for like 5 million years. We have all these uh, barriers to using it, man-made barriers, basically, which is we have to get through that. We have to have a mindset change here in Hawaii. We can't just obstruct everything that comes up. It, it's, it's not for the common good. You have to keep coming back, Mitch. Yes. We've got to talk to you more and more. We, I'm sure we haven't discovered everything we need to. But let me ask uh, Ray for a summary now, as he is normally want to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, it sounds like uh, hydrogen and, um, and, and actually using hydrogen to fuel vehicles is uh, on its way. We just have to reach that threshold where it, uh, it takes off and runs on its own, basically. And I think that will come, but we all want it to come sooner rather than later. Because right. if, we could, if we could mix the transportation issues with how we're addressing electricity in general, uh, that would be a great thing uh, right. to getting off of all of the fossil fuel that we use, except maybe for airplanes. That's the only thing they That's haven't tough. really quite yeah, got. They're going to be helpful. Yeah, not, not right. yet. Although they 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 have electric airplanes now that can run for about an hour. Uh, small airplane. Well, they have hydrogen so. airplanes. Okay, but they there actually you go. do. The Russians yeah. have built several of them, and there's a Are lot they of using them in Ukraine. Ukraine? <laughs> I want to joke, joke. <clears throat> okay, and one more question to Sharon. Sharon Moriwaki is here, and I, I, I want to, you know, propose, propound one question to her. Sharon, hearing all this about hydrogen, hydrogen vehicles, hydrogen trucks, buses, and finally hydrogen cars, and all the magic possibilities with hydrogen, are you ready to give up your pure electric and jump on the hydrogen bandwagon, the hydrogen highway, as they say? I will if I know how much it costs to, to create a car. Mitch has been talking about buses and airplanes. How much would I have to pay for a car, Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, we'll, we'll have Tesla, to cover that Tesla, in next week. <laughs> Tesla can well, that's a just real just cliffhanger. <laughs> you pay 50 to 60K for it, just like you would for a Tesla. I want to put in one more pitch, though. The city and county of Honolulu won an award with U.S. Hybrid for a uh, fuel cell powered, hydrogen powered garbage truck. Oh wow. Okay, so that's on its way. It should be here by next summer. The trick is to make the hydrogen out of the garbage and then you never have to get to your destination. Did you hear me say H power plant? I heard you say that. That's Mitch Ewan. He's with HNEI, a scientist and the hydrogen systems production manager, program manager at HNEI, the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute with UH. This is Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we're here on Wednesday, the state of clean energy, and we're trying to make Hawaii into a hydrogen economy with Mitch Ewan and Ray Starling and Sharon Moriwaki. Thank you all. Aloha. 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 Thanks for asking. Aloha. Get it for four hundred and fifty dollars. Welcome back to Ali Amashtas and